Of course, David Nicholson is here now. In your judgment, with your long experience of coming up to retirement, do you think the NHS can continue like this, funded by taxation and free at the point of need? I think this is a really important point. If you look at my colleagues across Europe and the developed world, all healthcare systems are having the kind of challenges that I described in the, in the, uh, in the film. And there are different ways of, of, uh, of dealing with them. Some countries are going down the road of significantly reducing the amount of the pay uh, for their staff. So 15, 20% reductions in pay for doctors and nurses, places like Ireland. There are some other places like Greece and Portugal and Spain who are looking at reducing the offer to patients. Mm. That's not the way we want to do it in the NHS. We're completely committed to the principle of universally available free at the point of use, and we think you can do it, but it is difficult to do. And so part you of think that, it can continue it as is? It absolutely can continue. Despite the looming 30 billion deficit? Yes, if we tackle the issues. And the issues are around giving patients more control, but also being really radical about the way we re reorganise our health services, providing much more service in the community and reducing the size of our hospitals. So there had to be fewer hospitals? They certainly have to be reduced in size. Whether there are fewer or not, that would be a matter reduced for local... In individual hospitals reduced in size, you mean? Absolutely, yes. But nobody likes to have their hospital either shut down or reduced in size, do they? That's why... That's why it's often very difficult for people, yeah. people to do that, and that's why it's controversial. But it is absolutely vital Doesn't that we it do it. follow from that, then, that politicians are quite the worst people to make these sort of judgments? Well, it's one of the reasons we've been through the whole range of reforms that we've had, to give an organisation a responsibility for looking beyond the electoral cycle. That's NHS England. That's the organisation I'm responsible for. Is the for. Secretary of State helpful in that process? All the politicians that I've worked with over the year, of, uh, and I have to say no political party no. here has a monopoly of good no. ideas about the, NA, about the NHS, but my, my experience certainly working with the current Secretary of State is when faced with a difficult decision, he is prepared to take it. And take a decision beyond the political cycle. That, I think, is the issue for us going forward. There's, there's no doubt. If you want to make change in the NHS, you need to think three, five, seven yeah. years out. And the tyranny of the, the electoral cycle does, stands... Does he? he absolutely is prepared to make the difficult decision. That has done every, every occasion. But the, but the system, I think, works against you. If you, if you, think, if you think about it, the, typically the cycle goes... It's 18 months before a general election. Yeah. Therefore, we can't make change. Then at the, around the hustings, politicians go around and promise things to their local populations that things will not change. And then you have a period afterwards where people say, we made these promises, we can't make change happen. And then you have a year in between no. those two things where you can no. make change. That is no way to run a health service. And that's why, but, I think, we need NHS England. It's that's also why we not need what happened, happen. of course, is it? I mean, after the last election... This coalition came in and made all sorts of changes that they hadn't talked about. Not about the delivery of health care. Oh. It was about the reform to the NHS system as a whole. OK, be, be honest now. After all the changes you've been through in the NHS, when this government came in and suddenly announced a lot more changes, what did you think? My immediate response was, I've been through a lot of these changes, yeah. these structural changes before. They seldom deliver what people yeah. expect and create a lot of uh, issues around people taking their eye off the ball. Mm. So what I had to do, and part of my responsibility, is to help the government come to a sensible set of conclusions that were implementable. Were you dismayed? Um, I did say that it was uh, a very large set of changes, and I did think that we would spend more time than we needed to looking at ourselves rather than thinking about services so and the way they needed to change. it was unhelpful, really, was it? Well, it's done a whole series, I think, of very helpful things. I mean, it has brought in general practitioners and clinicians into planning and organising services in a way that we never would have done before. It saved us, for this Parliament, £5.5 billion that we can invest in, in frontline services. And it has created an organisation, NHS England, which is capable of looking beyond the, the, the cycle. But hard choices are going to have to be made. Yep. You raised the question there of long-term conditions and you mentioned your own case of diabetes mm -hmm. you say it was a consequence of bad eating and stress mm -hmm. and other things 
If people choose to eat badly, if they choose to smoke, if they choose not to exercise, there is going to come a point, isn't there, when people are going to say it's not the taxpayer's responsibility. You've got personal freedom, but you must live with the consequences. Yeah, but there are millions of people who want to change, who want to do something about it. And we as an, an NHS need to help and support but them you by presume, providing... you presumably didn't realise what the consequences of your lifestyle were. I did realise the consequences of diabetes, but I, there was, like many yeah. people, there were a whole set of reasons why I decided that I would carry on the way that I, that I did. But what I learned through patient education, through the technology mm. available to the support of... GPs that it's possible to change your lifestyle and that's what I've that's but what it's I've too done. late it's not too late for me um, I can and already uh, in the year that I've since diagnosis I've stabilized my mm. blood sugar my m most of my signs now are in the right kind of place well, and so I can continue to work and won't develop those complications that were described in the film was that stress linked to the mid Staffordshire problems Clearly, the, the issues of, around Mid, Mid Staffordshire were, were uh, traumatic for the NHS as a whole, and still, and you? And still are. Of, of course, I was um, chief executive of the NHS from 2006. I worked in the West Midlands for a while. I saw some of the consequences of that up front. It is what will be written on your tombstone, of course, isn't it? Well, in the circumstances that we fi find ourselves in, I think... People, people make their own judgments about people's contribution. But I'm, if you think about what the NHS has, has delivered over the, next, over the last uh, seven or eight years, it is absolutely remarkable. The improvements in access, the attack on healthcare-associated infections, you know, the mm. tens of thousands of lives that we've saved. But there are uh, through cancer and coronary heart disease. But there undoubtedly there are, there are, are, are you know, I issues mm. that need tackling. And what we need to do is, le is learn from them. And I think one of the great things about Francis is in the, the Francis report is it gives us the opportunity to, le to learn and one of the things I, I learned is that you know openness and transparency and not being defensive all of those things being open to people who want to raise issues is a really important part of renewing the NHS. And you obviously thought about resigning at one point. Yeah I, clearly I mean I, I, when I... Do you I think don't, it would have been better if you had? Well when I, when, I, when I think about it, there were two reasons, really, I decided not to resign at the time. The first one was I'd started on the, the, uh, the, uh, the road of trying to improve the quality of care, making quality much more the organising principle of the NHS, and I wanted to see that through. And secondly, to be frank, when the Francis report came out, we were right in the middle of the biggest set of reforms the NHS had ever seen. You know, I, I said at the time that they were so large you could mm. see them from space, and I thought it would be irresponsible mm. to walk away at that particular Let time. Let me ask you one quick final question. You've been in the NHS how many years? 36 years. 36 years in the NHS. Uh, you come back in 36 years' time, or anyone looks at the NHS in 36 years' time, will it be an organisation we can recognise from today's template? I think the basic principle of being universally available, uh, free at the point of use, will be the way we will... We'll see it. It is the way of the, the future with genetics, with the knowledge that we're going to have about risk factors for the future. Having a system which shares risk across a whole population is much more likely to be successful than one based on private health insurance. Sir David, thanks very much. Thank